This is not bad at all. As a first impression, dito sa Fukuoka. Cheaper yung food, better quality. Hello everyone, this is Jam at Home and welcome to my channel where I share a glimpse of my work from home life. I dive into tech topics because I work in tech, offer productivity tips, and whisk you away with my travel escapades. Recently, we've traveled to Fukuoka and I'm so happy to share with you our Fukuoka adventure in this series. So join me as we explore a week's worth of wonders in this vibrant city. Pinuntahan namin yung mga hidden gems and some popular hot spots. We tried all sorts of mouth-watering foods and of course their shopping. So I hope you join me in each episode as I take you along to experience the best of Fukuoka. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to join me on this exciting journey. Let's discover the beauty and excitement of Fukuoka together. Get ready and explore with us. This is Jam and Jeff. I hope you join us in this very first episode of our Fukuoka series. And I'm so thrilled to share with y'all the details of our arrival, kung anong ginawa namin, kung paano yung process, how we navigated at our first meal here in Fukuoka, which is Hakata Isu. The immigration process is smooth overall. I would highly recommend you fill out Visit Japan web and download the QR code para pagdating niyo dito sa immigration, mas mabilis na. Otherwise, it's okay. You will just have to fill out yung immigration form manually dito. And then, ayan, nandito na kami sa labas. Sasakay na kami ng bus papunta sa Hakata Station. <laughs> Malamig dito ngayon, parang Baguio weather. Pero sa tanghali daw, umiinit. Medyo laid back yung bite dito. Wala <laughs> masyadong tao. Ayan. So, naglalakad kami papunta sa hotel namin. Malapit lang yung hotel namin sa Hakata Station. Like a few minutes walk lang. We're here! So very smooth lang yung immigration process. Pagdating namin doon, nag-fill out lang kami ng form and then customs declaration and then lumabas na kami. Yung mga napapanood naming vlogs, magta-train ride ka from the airport going to the Hakata main station. Tapos from there, doon ka na pupunta sa, depende kung saan ka magsistay. Pero hindi namin nakita yung train station paglabas. After namin makalabas ng customs, dun sa exit, bus station na agad. So we just took the bus. Anyway, it's just 15 minutes away from the airport to the main Hakata bus station. And wala kaming Wi-Fi. About us as travelers, we are budget travelers. And it's very common na kapag bibili ka sa airport, usually mas mahal. So kami, when we're traveling, specifically sa Japan, we don't buy a SIM card or we don't rent Wi-Fi devices sa airport. I know many of you are doing that, but for us, we don't do that kasi we usually book accommodations na may kasamang pocket Wi-Fi para hindi na kami magbayad ng extra. Pero yun nga, downside is pagkalapag namin sa airport, wala kaming internet. We have to rely on his navigation skills para makarating sa hotel namin. So, hindi naman siya pumalya ngayon. Like, after namin dumating sa Hakata Station, pagkalabas namin ng exit, uh, may wifi din pala sa Hakata Station. So, na nakakonect siya doon na kapag navigate. And from there, we were able to find our hotel. Which is about, what, 10 minute walk from Hakata Station. Very near. Ayun pa, as a tipid tip, when you book hotels, make sure you always book 
anywhere na malapit sa main station. So, dito sa pinagbuka namin ngayon sa La Foresta, it's just a few minutes walk from the main Hakata station. And we always make sure na malapit siya sa convenience store. Especially dito sa Japan, kasi usually dinner, we don't eat out. Bibili na lang kami ng mga sale items sa grocery, tapos yun yung kinakain namin for dinner. And usually, bumibili na rin kami ng extra for breakfast. Tapos, lunch na lang or early dinner kami kumakain sa labas. Depende kung saan kami abutan. So, ayun, lalabas muna kami at kakain. And we're gonna look for ramen isu, syempre. First order of business, di ba? Ramen agad. Ayan, napaka laid back dito sa Fukuoka, guys. Wala masyadong tao. Ayan, oh. See, you can see. Wala masyadong tao. Pero gabi na rin kasi. So, it's currently 9 o'clock. So, magkaklose yun ng mga 12. So, hopefully, maabutan namin. Tanap na namin ng ramen isu. At 10.30 p.m. Look guys, ang haba pa din ng pila. Yan, medyo naka-hype na ako. Let, excited na akong itay. And another sign of a good ramen shop is if yung mga nakapila ay local. Ayan, you'll see. Halos lahat ng nakapila at kumakain ay local, which is usually a good sign. Nakatuwa, 1,000. So, nasa mga 400 plus. 380. Oh, 380. Wow, ang galing mag-compute. <laughs> Sorry, may na talaga ako sa mat, guys. So, ayan, bumili na siya ng pila, ay, ng ticket. Habang nakapila kami. Okay. Okay. So, there's kimchi. Amoy na amoy yung sesame oil. Ano ba? Bamboo shoes? I think bamboo shoes. Hi guys, super sulit na to. So, sabi ni Jess, both of these, itong combo meal na to is 1,000 yen. So, around 380 pesos. It has rice with toppings and then the ramen. Huh? I think bamboo shoots here. Yeah. Sige, lagyan mo ako. No, I think it's ginger. Mm, pickled ginger. <laughs> Pag masyado. Pickled ginger. I'm just gonna put that aside for now. I thought it bamboo shoots, but it's pickled ginger. Look at that. I like ramen with thin noodles. Panipis yung noodle niya. And yung cha su niya is also roasted a bit. Mmm. Parang may pagka seafood -y smell yung broth. Sobrang sarap. Napaka-deep nung pork flavor. I've tried Ichiran ha. This one is yung broth nito mas malasa. And you can see, it's so fatty, it's so rich, pero napaka light. I don't know how to explain it. Light in a sense na hindi siya nakakaumay, but the broth is so rich. If you tried Mendokoro ramen ba, it, it tastes similar, but Mendokoro's broth kasi is medyo rich and fatty na kapag marami ka nang nakain, medyo nasistart na ako maumay. This one, hindi talaga nakakaamoy at all. Pwede dyan pa rin ito ng garlic. Let's see how it is. Okay. Let's try to see with the garlic. Let's see if it will add up. It's perfect after a long, tiring day. It's very comforting. Mm. 
Oo nga. Better with garlic. Shut up. Parang hindi ko ma-explain. Parang may halong seafood yung broth nila eh. Pati kan ka na mix my egg. <laughs> Here sa ramen. Maybe because sa sana ako kumain ng ramen na may egg. <laughs> Yeah. Ito ang worst na kahit. Grabe. Pero really, parang may halong hipon yung broth nila. Nalalasahan ko eh. Parang hindi lang siya pork broth. May halo siyang, ano, some sort of a, a, a shell na hindi ko ma-distinguish kung shrimp based pa. Basta definitely there's, I, I can I can taste the seafood in there. Pero ang ganda ng combination. Nakakalas. Ang, ang broth nito, grabe. I think the addition of that seafood based flavor, whatever that is, makes it work for the dish. Tara. Tsaka hindi siya nakakaupay. Hindi talaga. And I think it helps kasi yung chasu niya, hindi masyadong makapal. I think the thinness is just right para hindi siya nakakaupay. And it has a very smoky bite. Not matabang at all. Compared to Ichiran's chasu, this is way more flavorful. Parang siyang buttery. Parang may halang butter. And yeah, you can ask for a second serving of noodles. Pero ako bukang masusod na ako dito. Kasi sa namin palang plus yung rice. Masyari Manipis yung noodles niya. But it holds the broth very well. Definitely a ramen na you're not the youth na hindi mo nakaiba siya tapos na ako words but it's bad nakaiba siya and I think hindi mo trip yung medyo may sikuli na taste baka hindi to para sa'yo ito guys napakasulit niya kasi ramen plus rice is just 1,000 yen I think kung hindi ka naman masyadong malakas kumain pwede ito pagkatiyan na dalawang tao Mmm! Mmm! Huh? I can taste the sesame oil in there. And the kimchi. Tuna, mayonnaise, and chocolate. The spring onions really adds a bit of freshness into it. The rice is also good. Maybe she also shot it a little bit. Kumpal mo pa sa mayonnaise yung panahin. At binabalan siya yung pagka-spicy na yung kimchi. The sesame food flavor. Wow. It tastes like bibimbap but more creamy and mayonnaise-y. If that makes sense. That was one satisfying meal. Sabi ko nga, we're budget travelers, so sa amin talaga mabenta yung mga ganyan. Mura, masarap, maraming serving. Yan yung mga matatawag mo talagang sulit. Lumabas kami, bosog. Ayan, ngayon maghahanap na kami ng dessert. Human Google Maps. <laughs> Wala kaming internet na dinownload nyo lang yung Google Maps. At yan ang ginagamit namin pang navigate. So, nandito na kami sa 7-Eleven. Hanap na... Ah, sorry. Lawson's. <laughs> Nalilito ako. <laughs> Hanap ng dessert. Cheese tart. Ano, raw? Cheese tart. Oh. Paano masarap to? Kaso pag kumain ako ng ganito, kukusuhin ko na naman ng kape. Ito, raw cheesecake. Oh, mukhang masarap to. Ah, oo. Oh. Si 
Sige. Ako din yan na din. Gaya-gaya lang. Hindi. <laughs> oh, ito na ako na. Iyan naman ako. Bye daw ako, pero siya naman nagbigay sa akin nito. <laughs> oh, di ba? Winner. Feeling ko ito yung bakasyon na hindi rush. <laughs> Chill lang. <laughs> no? Ano kasi masyadong... Sarap is sarap. Sarap? Sabi niya masarap daw. Mmm. Ano? Oh. Kung bet mo ang matcha, type mo to. Ako may ako sa matcha. Very strong matcha flavor, pero napaka creamy niya. It's like matcha and cream Mary. Sarap. Mas may pinipig. Pinipig ba 'to? Yeah, pinipig. Ay, ay, ay. mo yung matcha. Mostly ng mga nakakain kong matcha ice cream. Mostly tastes like milk na may konting matcha. Ito, balanse yung lasa. Okay. Kung masarap matapang yung matcha, mapait. Pero ito, balanse siya. Bet. Very creamy. Ang ala niya ay... Okoy. Matcha from Lawson's. Hmm. Wala nang tao. Very quiet na ako. Very different sa Osaka vibe na ganito oras. Marami pa rin tao. Okay. That was a good dessert. Uwi na kami. Maglalakad kami ng 10 minutes. Kasi yan ang maganda. Pag yung Hotel or Airbnb mo is malapit sa city area. Tipid ka sa pamasahe. Kasi the first time we went to Japan, sabi ko nga, diba, budget travelers kami. <laughs> ulit, ulit So, the first time that we went to Osaka in 2017, nag-book kami ng very cheap na Airbnb. I think that was just 1415. Pero yun nga, malayo pala siya. Although katabi siya ng station, train station, kailangan ko, kailangan pa namin mag-train papunta sa main Shin Osaka station. And then from there, doon kasi yung parang main point, papunta sa mga iba-ibang places around Osaka uh, prefecture. So parang every time na pupunta kami sa, yung sa main Osaka, Dotonbori area, parang kami the train ride. So yung nag namin sa pamasahe, parang enough set niya rin yung price ng Airbnb na mas malapit sa Shin Osaka pero mas mahal. So, yan, natuto na kami na pag magbuo kami ng Airbnb, dapat malapit sa main station. Kahit medyo mas mahal siya ng konti, nakocompensate naman siya sa pamasahe. And yun nga, gaya nga nasabi ko, dapat laging may malapit na grocery. Ayan. So, yun lang. I-end ko na muna to. Tomorrow ulit, we will be going to Kurokawa Onsen. Sa susunod na vlog, samahan niyo ulit kami as we explore south of Kyushu. We're gonna experience the authentic onsen sa Kurokawa. Magkita ulit tayo!